Greetings, tubadors, and I hope you're all feeling very well, because I haven't been very well. Okay, I know that was a bit dramatic. I'm not dying, but I am still recovering from the mother of all viral infections, and hence the lack of videos recently. So, not only are you going to have to consider the idiocy of the Flat Earth Brigade over the next few minutes, you're also going to have to put up with my infected form filling your screens. So, let's get where this is going. We all know that Flat Earth philosophy is collapsing. Everyone's favourite shoe-sized IQ disc merchant, Nathan Oakley, is seeing his popularity dropping faster than a Pontypridd girl's knickers at an open bar, which will probably mean that he has to start delivering groceries again soon. We can only hope. Bob Nodell, yeah, he knows full well that we're all living on a, a spherical rotating earth, which is another reason why Nathan Oakley has got the hump on, because he blames Nodell for his own loss of earnings. Um, <laughs> To prove Bob Nodell's point, I know we've all seen this a hundred times, but uh, it never gets tired, so just in case you haven't seen it, unlikely I know, have a quick shifty at this lot. At a conference in Raleigh, we want to have proof there's no curvature. And if we can do that, it's game over. But the rotation is not looking good at this point. <laughs> we don't want to blow this, you know? Right, right. We've right. got $20,000 $20 in this yeah. freaking gyro. But yeah, if we, if we yeah, dumped what we, we found right now, yeah. we would be... It'd be bad. <laughs> it would be bad. So, Best what I just up. told you is confidential. So, what is the point of this video? Well, there are many things that get me wound up about these idiots, uh, but one thing that really gets to me is your common or garden flurfers' complete refusal to do even the simplest research into the subject that they're banging on about. Um, as we all know, their idea of research is usually no more than watching someone else's video on YouTube. Um, for a lot of these conspiracists, not only flat earthers, you know, it could be anything from uh, chemtrails to lizard people. Um, they simply watch these videos, assimilate that entire philosophy directly onto their own worldview, and they do it without any question or comparison, which in my mind is the true mark of an idiot. Anyway, the video that I'm going to talk about today, I came across a couple of weeks ago. And I thought this is a perfect example of somebody making the most ludicrous statements as fact when literally 30 seconds on Google would have saved them the embarrassment of advertising their profoundly idiotic ideas in public. Now, we'll come to the name of this particular content provider a bit later, but I will tell you that it's worth sticking around for. It really is. Um, I'd never come across him before. Um, I've never seen him featured in anyone else's um, Flat Earth takedown videos. Uh, he might well have been. Um, if you've seen him featured elsewhere, please let me know in the comments below. But the guy is awesome. I think he might be some kind of Middle Earth wizard. <coughs> anyway, my feature video is actually going to be a lot longer than his. So let's take this one segment at a time. Greetings! My first video for a while, so I'm going to try and keep it short. So, here we go. A spinning ball of water. They do say that 71% of the Earth is water, and that 96.5% of the Earth's water is in the oceans. And there, folks, is the black hole-sized error. As those of us with at least 50% of a functioning brain know, the Earth is not 71% water. If it was, the gravitational effect on each and every thing in and on the planet would be reduced by about 80%. And to put that into perspective, your average golfer would be able to drive a ball about two miles before it hit ground. And if somebody kicked Barnabas Nagy in the ass, he would rise to about 40 feet. Um, but being as most flurfers deny the existence of gravity, that won't mean much to them. The actual amount of water on the planet, taken as a percentage of the Earth's mass, is about 0.02%. Um, it doesn't sound much, but it still comes in at about 1.4 quintillion cubic metres. Right, next. 71% water, so 29% dry land. 
So this ball of water is spinning at over a thousand miles per hour at the equator while speeding through space at 67,000 miles per hour. Okay, we're back with that staple of the Fleurfer's argument, the dynamic movement of the planet as a whole body. Now, it is true that the Earth is rotating at about 1,000 miles an hour, or, put it more properly, about 15 degrees of its equatorial circumference every hour relative to the Greenwich Meridian. But what the Fleurfist fails to understand is the difference between linear velocity and angular velocity. This is why we see so many of these people pouring water onto footballs and, and giving them a spin. Now, this has been covered so many times by other equally sensible people that there's absolutely no point in covering it again here. What we can say, though, is that if the Earth actually was 71% water, then it would indeed fly apart at that rotational velocity since the planet would not create sufficient gravity in order to maintain its integrity. Now, the next few points in our friend's blatant display of misunderstanding are all about um, the usual stuff. You know, have you ever seen bendy water? Um, I can't feel the movement of the Earth, which suggests a complete lack of understanding on anything graphitic. Um, and they are very tired points, so they've been done to death. We'll skip them. Then we get to this unbelievably awesome nugget of singular wisdom. Plants and trees grow straight up on the plane, but how could they on a ball? Is this where the flat earth debunkers jump in? How can we demonstrate that trees grow straight up when they're on a ball? Well, the easiest way to prove that is to go outside, find a tree, look at it, and then come to the realisation that since every piece of observable and demonstrable evidence gives absolute proof that the earth is a globe, the trees can, in fact, grow quite successfully. Our funny little friend then displays an almost mythical inability to understand how light travels. I see the light reflection coming in a straight line from the sun to my feet and not over a curve. Just as the horizon is horizontal, the clue is in the word horizon. He didn't see light bend over the curve of the earth. Hmm. Neither do the rest of us. Well, at least not in any perceivable measure, since as anyone who has even simply walked past a GCSE physics classroom would know, light travels in straight lines. And before any of the flat arts who might have tried reading a paper on the relativistic nature of light in a gravity well start to comment, yes, light can bend around massive bodies. This is entirely due to the effect of gravity, but from the perspective of the light beam itself, it is still travelling in a straight line. I know, they can't get their heads around the difference between gravity and buoyancy, so that kind of buggers their ideas of, of quantum velocity. That's way out of their league. Um, but since most of the flatists don't believe in gravity anyway, again, that's not something they're likely to consider. So, taking into consideration the sub-remedial lack of understanding displayed by our content-providing friend, he then has the brass neck to make this ludicrous statement. Real physics, real chemistry, real biology prove... The pressurised spinning water ball cannot exist. Evolution is impossible. And that a pressure system cannot exist in a vacuum. So there you go. Not only is he a flat earther, he's also an evolution denier. Now, the statement is diametrically opposed to the actual truth of the matter. Um, physics, chemistry, biology, um, along with um, meteorology, geography, paleontology, astronomy, cartography a whole bunch of other ologies, they all prove within the current models that the Earth is a rotating globe orbiting um, a very average main sequence star in the Orion Spur of a spiral galaxy at about 7,665 parsecs from the galactic centre. And for the Star Wars fans, yes, a parsec is a unit of distance, not a measurement of time, regardless of how fast the Millennium Falcon completed the Kessel Run. So, after crawling through that cesspool of misunderstanding and credulousness, it does tend to make you wonder what it is that has happened to, or indeed is missing from, the sort of people who appear to believe this flat-earth nonsense. Then I found an answer. 
at least a potential answer as to why the person who made this particular video might be somewhat lacking in some basic cognitive skills. So let's give him a bit more introduction. This is Ruben Addis. Ruben is an advocate of herbal self-medication. Now, it was only when I started digging around for info on, uh, on Ruben that I fell into um, a little rabbit hole of my own that might explain how very few people seem to have encountered this, this fella's flat earth philosophy. It's because the video we've just watched is actually a departure from the usual way Ruben presents his musings on life, the universe, uh, and ganja. Um, what better way to educate the world about the truth of a flat earth than through the medium of reggae. I don't listen to reggae. Um, I like Nordic thrash. Doom, folk metal. I do, however, have to admit, I like Ruben, um, or as he is also known, Robel the Earthy Opian. Weird ideas about the shape of the world and drug use aside, this odd little biscuit seems to be the sort of mostly harmless um, crazy that I could happily be in the company of, at least for a short time. Um, so for the first time ever, I'm going to give a platform to a flat earther. But before I do that, I will thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, then uh, please do consider doing so and give that little subscribe button a cheeky little tickle. Um, Big Thor will pop up in a second. Give him a click. Um, I'm almost at 500 subs, which in real terms would have been over a thousand um, by now. Um, when I reach 500, I'll tell you why it's all been such a climb to get to that number. Um, if you would like to know when I upload my next video, just click on the notification bell. Um, don't smash it like some people ask you to do, otherwise you break your keyboard. Um, give a thumbs up or give a thumbs down, comment, share, and all those other lovely interactive things that we like to do. So, to play us out, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the flat earth waxings of the incomparable Robel the Ethiopian. Jaja, protect me from me flat earth dem. Holvar!